Our coach's profile this week on This Week in the USHL from the U.S. Under-17 team, Danton Cole. It's, uh, you know, it has been the, uh, it's been a tremendous experience. And, you know, I think that uh, the, the template and, and the work that they've, they've done over the last uh, 13 years here with the program, you know, right back from when, when Jeff Jackson and, uh, and, and Scott Monahan kind of moved here and got it rolling uh, uh, has really it has been a, been a great thing. And that, that's, that laid a pretty easy groundwork to walk into. And we've got a, a very talented uh, bunch of young men here, and they've been, they've been great to work with. And uh, the people in the front office and um, all the support staff has been outstanding. So, you know, in terms of coaching and, and being in a great atmosphere to, to kind of work your, uh, work your trade and your profession, it, it's been outstanding. Well, not only outstanding in, in terms of the uh, the talent and uh, being the youngest team in the league by definition. I know there's a couple of 1995 birth dates that are flo- floating around the league for some of the other uh, franchises, but uh, by definition, you have the uh, the best of the best and the uh, the cream of the crop of the under 17 players that are uh, brought in from all around the United States. And you know, oftentimes, uh, Dan, these guys as a whole are competing against players that are bigger, stronger, and, and oftentimes a year, two, maybe three years older. And your body of work speaks for itself, particularly your, re- your recent performance, seven straight wins in the USHL, and uh, Team USA is now 11-0-1 overall since the start of 2011, so Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been kind of so far, and um, you know the older team, uh, obviously they... You know they're they're in a better uh, I think from a maturity and a strength standpoint uh, uh, spot to compete night in and night out. But our our guys have done a great job, and uh, you know I think the big key for us at least this year was uh, was the, the the amount of time that we were able to spend in the weight room early and and kind of get our guys you know to to mature physically and get stronger. And uh, you know talent wise, I think you know we're in pretty pretty good shape. And I don't know that we match up every night like you said with guys that are three and four years older. Sure. But, we can kind of keep it close there, but when we're getting out muscled early on, and uh, you know where the man strength of hockey comes in, you know in the tight spaces, we just didn't win a lot of battles, and and I think we've somewhat evened that up a little bit. At least at least we're in the ballpark now, so that that's that's played a big uh, a big part in it. But it's 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 great for the development of the kids to be in the USHL and you know playing against those guys night in and night out really prepares us for the uh, for the international. Uh, tournaments and uh you know gets us playing at a at a very high level and and you're forced to play that way uh as a young man just to just to keep up so uh, i i think it's worked out real well and uh, uh i think it's been great for the ushl and the program you know in, indeed and you're currently standing fifth place in the eastern conference the western conference says i know attracted a lot of attention because of the log jam at the top but uh, the Eastern Conference profile, I, I believe, has been raised just to being able to follow the releases and follow the league from week to week. The profile of the Eastern Conference has been raised, and you got yourselves now back up over 500 at 2016 and 3. So you put yourselves in a pretty favorable position uh, looking ahead to uh, postseason and, and so forth. Yeah, you know, we have. And that's, uh, you know, as a program, I think we both teams kind of set that goal to uh, to try and get into the postseason, especially after last year uh, of not making it. And, uh, um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to, to run this string out. You know, with 21 games left, we've got 15, and the older team has six. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of work, I think, like you said, since the new year, and it's put us in a really good spot. And now it's up to us to make sure that, uh, you know, when we have big games like this weekend with Youngstown, that, that we do a little damage and, uh, you know, try and keep getting points and getting the playoffs. Because, you know, from a from a development standpoint, again, that's just another uh, – Another aspect of the game that's that's great for our guys to go through to be in the pressure situations to you know to have to ramp up and play play a team three or or five times depending on the round uh, in the preparation for it. So some we're looking forward to, and uh, I know the guys would much rather be uh, be playing games in the middle of April than uh, hmm. than starting their spring workouts. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, when you get option A and option B, I think I know which one they'd pick. <laughs> a lot more fun to be still playing hockey. That's right. That's right. And I know uh, I, they know what's what's in store for them in the weight room and on the track. So I think uh, <laughs> right. I think uh, we we'll, we'll probably won't have an effort problem here the rest of the way. <laughs> I, I would suspect not. Uh, talking about your team overall and uh, some of the individuals that uh, make it up, uh, as often as the case at every, I always say at every level of hockey, uh, goaltending is a huge factor. And uh, recently, you've had the shutout twins in goal, get back-to-back shutouts. That's quite an accomplishment. 
uh, against Muskegon in Chicago. And uh, just to begin to t- talk about your, your two goaltenders, uh, Colin Olson and uh, Jared uh, Rutledge, a couple of uh, top young prospects. Yes, uh, you know they are, and it's uh, they're they're interesting in, in the sense that uh, the makeup of them, uh, you know, couldn't be more different, right down from their physical attributes. Uh, you know, Collins is a six six two six three kind of prototypical, you know, just really big athletic goalie, and uh, Jared's a little bit smaller, although he's growing a, a little bit. He's probably about five eleven now, um, and, and I think Jared came in Rutledge, uh, you know, technically, you know, very advanced, and uh, you know his. His numbers, save percentage, and goals against have been outstanding, and uh, you know he's he's done real well. And I think Colin is is kind of catching up. And the funny thing with Colin is what what he he does have a tendency to do is is win hockey games. Whether uh, hmm. you know he he'll hmm. uh, if, if, if we score six, uh, he'll give up less than that. And, and uh, <laughs> you know if we only score one like we did the other night, he'll uh, he'll he'll keep them down. So you know, them they out. both have uh, certain strengths and. And Joe Exer does a great job with our goaltenders, and um, it, it's pretty intensive training for them. And and uh, they, they'd have to try pretty hard not to get better. But both both guys have done a great job, and uh, um, they've kept us in games. And that's uh, that's what you ask for your goalies night in and night out. And if sixteen year old kids in this league, that's uh, mm. it's tough to do from a mental standpoint. And they've they've done a great job. Yeah, that's a true baptism of fire at that position. And I remember Joe Exer very well going back to his uh, Merrimack career, and he has really gained. Uh, incredible stature his reputation in terms of working with young goaltenders i mean you, you really are very lucky to have him on your staff i'm sure yeah no he, he does a great job and uh you know joe you know while he does the uh you know he does the the, the world u20 team and you know he's a goaltender coach for that and he's a goaltending coach for our program here he's 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 a lot more than that he's he's a good student of the game and uh um, you know, we have him out at, you know, he's almost, uh, he's daily out at our practices. He's like a, a third assistant for us out there. And, um, yeah, he's a great resource and, uh, um, he takes full credit for everything Merrimack's doing this year. So we have to hear about that every day. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, he's, uh, he's a great guy to have around and, uh, you know, he does, does an outstanding job with the goalies. And some of the other notables on your roster, there, there is absolutely f- names that'll be familiar to hockey people as it is all around the USHL. You've got uh, Henrik Samuelson, uh, son of Ulf and uh, longtime uh, NHL defenseman. Uh, Brother Philip is uh, a former USHL player for the Chicago Steel. He's now enjoying a, a tremendous career at BC. Also, Quentin Shore, who's got a couple of brothers at Denver. And uh, you have not only sons of NHL players, but interestingly enough, you've got a son of an NBA player with uh, Seth Jones, who's the son of a uh, former NBA player. Remember Popeye Jones? As well as another NHL guy, Stefan Matteau. Does he run around the uh, the ice occasionally, going Matteau, Matteau, Matteau? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the most uh, famous calls he, uh, in the history you know, of has, hockey. Has his dad's name, so he gets uh, a little <laughs> little bit of the, the, the ribbing there. But yeah, we do we do have some good bloodlines here, and uh, yeah. you know all those guys have uh, uh, bring you know different things to the table. But it, it's one thing that's interesting with. Uh, with young men that that dad that dad had played at, you know, whether it's in the NBA or the NHL, that they kind of bring to the table, and that's kind of that understanding of professionalism and 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 how you have to go about your work and and how hard it is to make it, and uh, and all those guys certainly they they certainly bring that, and it's a uh, sometimes it's hard in the locker room when you get a bunch of like I said, sixteen year olds that you know have never faced this type of competition in this type of battle day in and day out and, and it's nice having those guys around that that had that experience and, um, and and got a chance to hang around their dads and and see what you have to go through so certainly they bring uh they bring some great things on the ice and off the ice as well and we also uh, of note is the fact we would be very extremely remiss if we didn't mention that Jacob Tropa uh one of your uh, defense one of your blue liners a uh, great honor in in that league as a young performer was named to the USHL's midseason All Star team. I mean, that's uh, that's quite a uh, an addition to his resume. You know, it, it is. And and, and Jacobs, uh, he's a tremendous uh, young man and player. And uh, the the good thing about that, or the the interesting thing, is you know that's you can't vote for your own players. You know, we do our, our coaches. We do get a chance to vote, but you know that's from the other coaches, and that's uh, them watching him night in and night out. And he's. He's a tremendous, uh, tremendous talent. You know, offensively and defensively, uh, 
Uh, he's he's just very mature and and he's he's got good size. He's got a great little mean streak to him, and <laughs> um, he's going to be playing hockey. Uh, you know how they say in the NFL, this kid's going to be playing on Sunday. Sunday, uh, yeah. You know, Jacob's a guy that's uh, he's gonna, <laughs> he's going to be playing. Uh, you know, uh, on TV a lot uh, the rest of his career. And he's been fun to work with. He's uh, you know the best thing I can probably say about him is just just what a good young man and how coachable he is, and and uh, and and how much better he wants to get. And I've you know, in my, my travels of coaching and all that, I've seen a lot of uh, different types of players and, you know, the kind that, that have a good chance of making it and the kind that, that have no chance based on their attitude and the way the way mm. he approaches things. Uh, um, you know, I'd just be shocked if he didn't just with, with his skill set and, uh, and the mental makeup and the way he goes after it. Well, you mentioned, Denton, the, the uh, very uh, intense uh, competition night in and night out, uh, how high the bar is raised night in and night out in the league, and uh, what an asset that is for international competition. And we want to mention that your most recent international soiree was in Slovakia, a tournament victory in Slovakia, a uh, very impressive accomplishment. Uh, what is next internationally? Because you have a little bit of a, a different spin with the fact that uh, your teams, the, the development teams, are sometimes excused to play in international competition. What, what uh, would be uh, next uh, on the agenda for, uh, for, for these young men? Well, for the for the '94 birth here, we're we've wrapped up our uh, our international for the year, and and uh, what's left for the program though is is the the big goal for us over a two year span every year is the uh, um, the World U18 Challenge and or championships, and uh, that's similar to the the U20. Uh, uh, world championships and and the same as the Olympics in terms of the bracketing and how it's played. So right. that's our big thing. We will probably have a couple of our guys, uh, uh, you know, bump up and play with the older team. So, um, you know, as a program, that's the thing we really set our sights on, and uh, uh, we're kind of gearing up, you know, both teams in a sense, uh, preparing for that right now. Man, my my final question here. This has been very enlightening. And w- when you're talking to a guy with a resume such as yourself, and I think when we had talked before, I'd mentioned the fact that I remember you very well. My my long tenure as the voice of Boston University hockey, and I remember you playing at Michigan State. Even uh, played with uh, one of the uh, one of the the uh, one of the more interesting characters, shall we say, of hockey that I have got to know in Chicago over the years. One Joe Murphy. Oh yeah, Joe. Uh, Joe was one of my roommates my uh, oh, my first year and uh, and his uh, his only year there. And uh, boy, what a you know again what a what a talent he was. Oh and, man, uh, you know, well worthy of, of going going first overall. I mean, he came in and uh, I think you know he had the World Juniors that year, so he missed some games. But I think he had sixty some points in oh. thirty five games, and uh, uh, he was. You know, he was a man playing uh, playing with uh, boys in comparison to the rest of the, the freshmen on the team. And, you know, he, he was a lot of fun to watch, and uh, you know, played hard and played fast, and uh, uh, you know, had a had a great career, and uh, you know, snuck in a Stanley Cup. And, yeah, uh, that's right. You know, he, uh, you know, he, he he did a lot of great things out there, and he's a he's a good friend and a and a good guy to have. I wish we could have had him for uh, geez, at least one more year, but uh, uh, we we took advantage of him while we had him there, and uh, yeah, he was he was a heck of a player. Absolutely. I got to know him over the years. A friend of mine manages an establishment called Stanley's in Chicago. And uh, I met uh, Joe there and uh, socialized with him on a number of occasions and uh, got to know him and uh, a real character. Having him for a roommate, I'm sure there was never a dull moment, Dan. No, there's not. And he's, uh, you know, just, just a dry kind of, uh, you know, he's got a little cowboy in him, you know, and yeah. just uh, <laughs> right. nice, nice, deep and uh, deep voice and dry sense of humor and uh yeah, he he was fun to have around. There was, uh, like you said, not not too many dull moments with Murph. Exactly, exactly. And well, actually, my final question: a guy with your resume, you've coached at so many different uh, coaching experiences: American Hockey League, head coach in college, assistant coach in college. Now you're back and working with these kids. It's a it's a certain uh, time, a very important time in the development of young elite players. How does this rate with all of the other coaching experiences? Are you enjoying this more? Is it something that, uh, you know, it, the, the, when you add up the pluses and the minuses, what, what is the, the overall, the body of work and the experience been like for you? I'm really interested to see what your answer is to that because you have seen hockey from uh, some so many different sides. Yeah, it's it's. I tell you what, I mean, the, I mean, the, the probably the the best way to start out answering is that is that I just I really love coaching and it's something that I didn't uh, when I was playing really until the the very end and I kind of jumped into it. Didn't think I would, and I I think at every level there's there's it, it, I don't want to say they're all pluses, but they really they really are. There's different 
you know, you get a chance in Grand Rapids to coach guys like Nick Cronwall and Yuri Hoodler is, is, is pretty neat in that age of their development. And uh, college is great. You know, you have guys there that are, are going to school and, and they're at a very influential time in their lives. And But I, I tell you what, this has been, uh, uh, I don't know if I've had this much fun. And, and, and part of it, I think, is that <laughs> everywhere else, you know, other than the NHL, everybody wants, in a way, kind of wants to get somewhere else. And they want to be there, you know, in college, Jesus, if, they can get an NHL contract and sign. They're they're probably going to leave if it's the right deal. In right. the American Hockey League, everybody in the room wants to be, uh, you know, uh, on a show. plane heading to the NHL. And, right. And the thing about here is that these guys are here for two years, and and they're they're just so hungry to learn that it's it's just been a really a fun thing. No one's trying to go anywhere else right now. They're not drafted. Uh, this is where they're at, and this is where their heads at, and and they're playing for the United States of America. And that's. You know, yes. you, you kind of combine all of that and, uh, you know, the the reasons kids should play hockey and the reasons you should coach and, and what you want to get at. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a fairly pure uh, pure form of it, I guess, uh, in, in a day and age when there's not a lot of that. You know, we see a lot of odd things in sports. So I, I really liked it, and, uh, you know, I just I, I try really and enjoy where I'm at, and I've been blessed to be able to coach a lot of different, uh, different levels and different things and, and met a lot of unbelievable people. So it, it's been a pretty good ride for me. Oh, indeed. It sounds like it has. I can tell just by the inflection in your voice that you're having a great time working with these kids and that the focus is there. Hey, anytime, as you well know, you've got the USA across the front of the sweater, it's something special. And, and if that doesn't get your attention, well, then, you know, you, you got the wrong guys in Ann Arbor. you got to take the bus ticket home if, if you can't get focused on that level. That, you know, that's 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 for sure, and uh, um, you know we try and try and remind them that you know it's easy to get up when you're in the tournaments or the World Juniors, and uh, you know you're playing against other countries. But I think it it, it is really important that they realize that uh, you know hey, every game that we're we're throwing that U.S. jersey on, and every time right, you know, all if they're games. in an airport or uh, you know they're at a restaurant or or they're at Pioneer High School here in Ann Arbor, that you know that 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 crest, uh, whether it's visible or not, that's always on them, and and uh, and they owe it to. Uh, a lot of people to to represent it the right way, and our guys have done a done a great job with that. And I think uh, um, as much as you can at sixteen or seventeen, I think they're they're, they're starting to get how much uh, how much that means and what kind of weight that carries every day. Absolutely, and they're fortunate to have you, Dan, with your great uh, hockey resume. And want to thank you for spending some time with us here. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking again down the road. All right. Well, my pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me on. And I want to thank Danton Cole for joining us on our coach's profile this week from the U.S. Under-17 team on This Week in the USHL.